Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be attempting to break down these uh, various NFL slates that they scheduled for this evening. You have two uh, Monday night games, um, uh, Tennessee-Buffalo and Minnesota-Philadelphia, and they're staggered one hour apart. And they have three separate slates. They have a showdown slate for each one, and they have a two-game slate. And I'm going to, in this video, kind of tackle the two-game slate. And then I'm going to do separate videos on each of the showdowns. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through just kind of who I like at, at each position and then talk a little bit about lineup construction, essentially from a hand building perspective. And then what we'll do is we'll have a lot of fun. We'll do kind of a sample uh, saber sim build and, and see what kind of stuff we come up with on, you know, this kind of fun two game slate that they're offering a million for first for the unique lineup. Uh, if you can get that done um, or obviously chopping it up if you, uh, chop it up with a bunch of other people. Anyway, um, I'm going to be referring to my, the, you know, the true DFS projections, which are, you know, kind of a nice little aggregate of, of the industry, plus, a, you know, a little twist on the top. Um, when I go through this, I can't show these. That's only for premium members. But when I say, like, who I like in these positions, it's going to be based off of that. And then again, as, as you know, I mean, the, the, the smaller the game set, the less – you know, projections are going to govern the day. You know what I mean? Like there's more variance involved when you only have to pick between 10, 10 or so players and you get the one game to, to stab at it. So the actual projection is not going to be as important as doing kind of cool stuff like uh, finding unique lineups, which we can talk about. And I am going to treat this almost like a showdown. The only thing that's different about it is you don't get those really super cheapos it, like you do get in the showdown slates. Um, so that makes construction a little bit different. But what we're doing is the same type of thing that we usually do on very, very short slates is try to leave money on the table, try to make a couple of pivots here and there and, and hope it's unique enough without getting too unique, you know, without without becoming just, uh, just, a, just a bunch of bad plays. Um, okay, so uh, first of all, let me... Uh, I have the drafting thing pulled up already. You have the two games, and I would say that, you know, from a game perspective, certainly the second game rates to be more competitive. Uh, Buffalo is a sizable 10-point favorite against Tennessee, who really doesn't don't have all that much going on uh, with respect to their skill positions. So I don't know what kind of, overall fantasy performance you're going to get out of this game. And, and, and not to mention the fact that while Buffalo is kind of humming offensively, Tennessee does have a pretty, pretty respectable defense. So if I had to pick which game was going to produce more, more juice. I, I would certainly believe it would be the Minnesota Philadelphia game. Um, but nevertheless, uh, let's, let's break this down by position, I guess. So, and then we will do a Saberson build. I think that based on my numbers, you have Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts, and, and, and those two rate significantly ahead of the others. Um, I didn't expect Hurts to rate that much better than than uh, than Cousins, but he, but he does, and, and his price reflects that, um, and his ownership reflects that. I, mean, I have both these guys at about 60%, um, and there is a drop down to, say, Cousins and Tannehill if you want to do that. I would say a significant drop down to Tannehill. The only thing I would say about Tannehill that makes him somewhat interesting is the game script of this game. So if in fact Buffalo just kind of puts it to them in the first half and it's, you know, Tennessee's coming from behind the whole second half. I mean, we've seen this a bunch of times that, that hope that, you know, the, the opposing team can really, you know, get a lot, a lot of points in garbage time. Um, but aside from that, I mean, he certainly does not project to be that, you know, that that strong of a play, to say the least. So why don't we put one of these guys in, whether between Allen or Hurts, it really doesn't make too much of a difference. Now, before I get to the running backs, I want to look at the receivers first. Um, the way I have the receivers ranked, I have Jefferson and Diggs ahead of the others. So that's actually interesting because – Again, I'm trying to find out the best, you know, which quarterback to use. And so since Diggs is the, is the receiver that I have rated the highest, I probably want to pair him. I probably want to use the quarterback that that 
correlates with him. So I think we can start off with Allen and Diggs as, as, as the first priority, um, uh, as opposed to saying going Hurts with A.J. Brown. And A.J. A, AJ Brown is the best alternative for the Phillies, for the, for the Eagles, with wide receiver. But I think that, that you know, let's just start with Allen and Diggs. Uh, the next best receivers I have, as I mentioned, are A.J. Brown. And then, then there's, there's a drop down to um, the next group. And the next group I have under A.J. Brown would be Thielen. I mean, these are all very close. Thielen, Davis, Devontae Smith, and Robert Woods. And the interesting thing about the Robert Woods is that it provides that kind of run back uh, for this Josh Allen, Stephen, uh, Stephon Diggs thing. And the thing is, is that it it's he can probably get there in one of several ways. Like if this game does shoot out somehow and Tennessee keeps it close, he could be the primary receiver. And in addition to that, if they're in garbage time, he could be the primary receiver also. So in a weird way, like Woods to me is almost a better play than Diggs because Diggs doesn't get there in every game script. And I do think that Rod, Rob, Robert Woods gets there in every game script. So if I'm building a lineup. I think this is the way I would start um, is maybe Diggs, uh, Allen, Diggs, and Woods. Um, the other thing, I, I do see Woods being somewhat owned. Um, maybe about 30% of his price is just so appealing. So the next guy I have, as far as, you know, just projection goes, would be Adam Thielen. Um, excuse me, would be Justin Jefferson out of that, uh, out of that Minnesota game. And I do think that, 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 that game does rate to have the be more competitive. And I think that he is, you know, one sense maybe a stronger play than Diggs, but because but because I have Allen rated higher than Cousins, maybe this is the best way to do it. Play Allen, play Diggs. Hope you get the rushing touchdown out of Allen and maybe a passing touchdown or two to Diggs. Um, if you wanted to pivot off of Diggs and and stay with that Buffalo offense, you could play Dave Gabe Davis, but you're really not saving that much. Like Gabe Davis is only fourteen hundred less than Stephon Diggs. And I just feel as though, you know, Diggs is just, a, just so much of a better play that I don't think he, he save all that much, you know, with, with the, with the 1700 hour savings. Um, I think the upside is just way too high for, for Diggs. Um, and I do have Jefferson as rated obviously much higher than Thielen, but if you come down to having to save money and we're going to get to that in a minute, because we're just playing the best plays right now. We haven't even figured out we can afford all this yet. Um, you might need to go down to Thielen. You might need to go down to Gabe Davis. The the Philly receiver that really stands out is is Devonta Smith. Uh, well, there's AJ Brown and there's Devonta Smith, but but AJ Brown, I mean he's seven thousand. Devonta Smith is forty five hundred. That's significantly, obviously, significantly lower. And I think that he's a really really good play. Let's put him in right now. We'll put in Devonta Smith at 4,500 in here. And as you see, I mean, you're going to need these savings at some point. So it's better to get ahead of the curve here. So let's say instead of playing Jefferson with with um, with with AJ Brown, maybe you play Jefferson with Devonta Smith. Maybe you play Thielen with Devonta Smith. But all these guys are probably you know this is we're not getting too off the border. These are very very logical ideas. Um, when when you start to get a little off the board, you get down to other cheapos like Isaiah McKenzie, like he's at 4,100. But I just, I just feel as though that he's like going to be like fourth on the list to say the least. I mean, you got Josh Allen, he'll try to run one in. You got Diggs, Then you got, you know, uh, Gabe Davis probably next. And by the time you get to the Isaiah McKenzie, now you're talking about a, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know if Buffalo scores enough to put, to get all these guys in play. You know, I just, I, again, I guess this goes down to my my feeling of this game script. Is I, I just I do think this is going to be a lower scoring game than the other one. I think Buffalo's defense is really strong. I think that they can handle this game rather easily without having to put forty points up on the board. I mean, a score like twenty seven to ten in this game really would not surprise me one bit. And this whole game could bust, you know. 
Um, so, so be careful before going down to those like fourth and fifth options, such as, you know, uh, Isaiah McKenzie, like he'd be the one that would just get that, that fourth touchdown because he hasn't gotten any, any others. And, and some, you know, and, and Allen wanted to get four out there. You know, I'm not too worried. I mean, I, that's just, this is not the game script I anticipate Buffalo putting up 35 points. Um, okay. What other receivers am I seeing here? I think after McKenzie, now you're just kind of, you're after, you know, you're, you're asking for trouble. Um, now with tight ends, you do have to play one on the, on this slate. You do, you do have Goddard and Knox as pretty much tied. And then you get a pretty decent sized drop down to Herb Smith at, 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 at 3,200. Um, then you got stuff like, Austin Hooper, maybe at 3K. So it is those two main guys. So it would be either Dawson Knox or Goddard. If we could afford Goddard, that would be really helpful. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to do it. Let's put him in for now. Just don't, I think we're running out of, running out of gas here. Maybe not. You'll see, because you'll see what, what, what else is happening here. All right. So, Let's do running backs. So the top rated plays are going to be guys we probably can't afford. Right? So, so you have, well, we'll see. So you have Dalvin Cook, right? You have Derrick Henry. Now the thing is, is that I also I, I think that if you follow along with 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 my game script here, I just don't believe this is a Derrick Henry type of game, you know. I think Derrick Henry at 40%, 50% ownership is is probably a pretty easy fade if you want to know the truth. Um, uh, and, and and if that's the case, then you have Dalvin Cook as really the next the next uh the next option. I don't know if you could afford him if you want to play these receivers. Now, again, doesn't say you have to play these receivers, then you have to go into a real cheapo uh, city if you want to do that. And we'll get into a couple of kind of who do's more when we Maybe we talk about the showdown video, but I'm really just trying to build a lineup with good plays here and, and, and you can't have everything. So the next group on the next running back that I would have, as far as my rankings go, I have two that are pretty close and that would be uh, Miles Sanders and, uh, and Devin Singletary. So we have to really think about, you know, what we're doing here. Like if, if you play all three of these guys, Sanders, Goddard, and Devontae Smith, I mean, look, the good thing is it's only a two game slate. So you don't have to worry too much about correlation or anything like that. And I think in the name of of getting uh of getting a lineup built, I mean, maybe you should do this. But but I wonder if you could get both those guys in. Like if you play say Sanders and the other guy Singletary I wonder if you can get them in. I, I think you might. You almost, right? I mean, almost. You have to make one other little thing and play it cheap defense and kind of get them in. Let's pull these guys out for a minute. And what else can you do running back wise? But it's just not a lot. You know, you could you could take a stab at Kenneth Gainwell, but what does that even get you? An extra thousand? You know, Devin Singletary is legit the lead back. You know, Miles Sanders is legit the lead back. You know, the, these guys are, are just so much, project so much better than these other $4,500 running backs. But I think those two, you should try to find a way to play them. Now, again, I've already given you options of, if you didn't want to play like Diggs or Jefferson to pay down a little bit, whatever. Um, so you can make this lineup, you know, with um, – and you could certainly almost always make the line to put Jalen Hurts in instead of Josh Allen, for example. Okay. But I think it's smart to not overdo it with the Buffalo Buffalo receivers, you know? I just don't know if there's going to be enough points out of them to make them optimal. Uh, in any case, as far as defense goes, I really strongly advise you to, to just play whatever defense fits. Yes, if you can afford the Bills defense, great. Play them, you know. Like, they're the best. They're the best option. Um, and then the Eagles probably would be next. Um, and then, and then I have the Vikings. 
but it's really more about which one fits your lineup. So I would say literally in order, if you play Bills, great. If you play Eagles, great. If you can't play the Vikings, that's fine too. And really, if you're reduced to playing Tennessee, you can do that. You know, I, I don't think that the defense is going to, you know, there's just way too much variance in defense for me to make that part of the priority. But for the record, Buffalo is big surprise, the best defensive option. Um, um, so again, I can't really build the whole lineup for you, but I think that's kind of the idea. And that that's without getting into any of these like hoodoos that I, I don't really think are that great plays. Like that's like Zach Moss, the running back. I just don't think he's up there. KJ Osborne. He'd be like the third or fourth wide receiver option at 4,300. I, I just prefer him cheaper. That's the best I can think about this. I'd rather give up like a Justin Jefferson, you know what I mean? Like, and go down to Thielen. I'd rather give up an A.J. Brown and go down to Devontae Smith. I'd rather even give up a, a Diggs and go down to Gabe Davis than to give up, than to take a shot at maybe a zero with these running backs, you know? So um, that's the way I'm looking at this slate. With – Respect to some uh, a saber sim build. Let's go ahead and do that. So what I did was I put my projections as they are now into saber sim, and just for fun, I want to build. You want to build one fifty? Why not? Let's build hundred and fifty lineups out of uh, out of this. Now, should we set a a max salary? Like, is a two game slate one of those where I just don't want to possibly? Fill in my lineups, uh, my salary. All right, let's do it. Let's make it 49000 um, But the thing is, is, you're so tight with some of these builds. I'm not, I'm not going to make that happen right now. Let's, 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 let's allow it to use the whole salary. Um, because as we've seen just from building by hand, that to get, to get the, the to get what you want, you are probably going to need all the salary you can get, you know, if, if you're gonna if you're gonna you know be limited to 49.2 or 49.3 as we saw just from you know attempting to build it does become kind of a squeeze um so let's see uh it would be nice if we could build up a lineup with with the, with the guys we wanted and have money left on the table but i don't want to set that as a uh as a requirement in this first build so I wonder what I'm going to get. Am I going to get 100% Allen or am I going to get 50 Allen, 50 Hertz? Am I going to get 100% Jefferson or am I going to get some Thielen? Let's see what we got. Let's see what we get. All right. So the top owned guy on the whole slate is looks like Stefan Diggs. And then I'd be getting 66% just Josh Allen, Jefferson. Wow, it's getting me Dalvin Cook. How on earth am I getting Dalvin Cook? So I'd have to inspect those lineups a little bit and see what that would do. Um, how do I get Dalvin? Because what you could do is you could look at this and see. Let's look at the, all the Dalvin Cook lineups. Well, this is where you get, look at it, like this crapola, like Johnny Munt. Isaiah McKenzie, I would not consider crapola. That's the thing. Um, and this one, Zach Moss. I think this is actually an all right. All right. And then you get, couple of hoodoos here's the kez watkins watkins so you know now you're getting into real kind of like almost showdownish dark throws if you play dalvin cook but maybe that's okay maybe that's what you're supposed to do maybe you're supposed to play the dalvin cook and 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 what you do is you shuffle your 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 dark throws you know maybe take a kevin game rolls from time to time a johnny munts from time to time you know uh irv smith from time to time and just come up with a whole bunch of combinations. And that's the way you can get to somebody like Dalvin Cook. Um, th these types of bills, the Zach Moss and De Devin Singletary together, I might have to veto something like that. Um, I just don't see how that's going to work. Um, uh, once again, like if, if Buffalo, you know, wins the type of game I'm expecting, it's just not going to, it's just not going to be a Zach Moss. You know what I mean? Like it's going to be Diggs will get one. Allen will get one, and then maybe one other guy gets one, you know, and maybe one of those aforementioned guys gets two, you know, whatever. But I don't think you get down to the bottom of, of the of the, of the of the touchdown tree. Uh, Dawson Knox maybe would be the next, but he's 4K. I mean, he's no bargain. Um, so that's that's the thing I actually was surprised at when I just run this build is that how much Dalvin Cook you could get 
if you do go for some of these kind of hoodoo plays. Um, I think this is a kind of a fun slate. I'm going to play this one with some volume. I'm not going to play it 150. Um, who knows? Maybe I will. Um, because I think that there's a lot of good plays in here. And I think if, I think people can, can make good lineups with good plays you know, without having to, without having to drop down to, to all too much nonsense. Um, and I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to get some of it. Um, I'll be live at starting at 540 because I'm going to do some baseball and then uh, I'll, I'll definitely get some football done as well. Um, probably go until seven and uh, yeah, that'll do it. Uh, that'll do it for the classic main two game slate.